How you feeling, sport? A little better. All right. So, listen, I called the doctor. I brought you some medicine, but I called the doctor anyway. Hey, this is it. Myrtle and the Magician's Magic Elixir of Youth. And it's guaranteed. Once we get this stuff, old timer, and you'll be young again. <laughs> Look at you're gonna have to have a swig of this, okay? Yeah, lift your head up. Okay, it's so one swig. Hey, Steve! Stop! Hey, what are you doing here? I told you not to come back this way. Steve, it was so easy! They're still lying on the floor. They think that bomb we tied to them is wired, you know? <laughs> Piece of cake, just like you called it. Yeah, we walked into the loan company. And like you said, they don't like it to look like a bank, right? So there's no guard. Uh, uh what are you doing? That's well, my idea, right? Half for me and half for you two. Hey, no, even split. I mean, it got rough out there. Rough? You came in laughing. We had to shoot the cop on the beat. Piece of cake, eh? Cops are Sounds like it's coming down the street. I thought you said you weren't followed. Not a soul. I swear it. It's probably the police emergency. What emergency? I called him for Lenny. Yes, sir, right over here. He was a little kid. Where's his mother? We don't have one. His father? He's on a business trip. Well, you better get him back here. Fast. Uh, doctor, where are the, the cops that usually help you? The outside? There aren't any. Where's your phone? It's on the TV. It's very serious. A responsible member of his family should be with him. Well, I'm responsible. How old are you? I'm almost 16. I'm sure you're a great brother, but that's not quite responsible enough. There are papers that have to be signed. This is Dr. Locke. I have a patient for intensive care. Name? Oh, Lenny. Lenny what? Lenny Jones. Lenny Jones. Kidney failure. All right, you get some clothes and you take him to the hospital. I'm going to wrap him in a blanket and take him out that way. All right. Does he have any favorite books he likes to read? He may be in the hospital for quite a while. It's on the Doctor, you said kidney failure. Doesn't everybody have two? There's a possibility that neither one of them is functioning. Then he's going to need a transplant, right? 
A kidney transplant requires a close blood relative as a donor. Is your father healthy? Well, yeah, but what if he doesn't get back in time from his trip? What about you? I'm an RH problem. All right, you better find your father and get him back here fast. I'm going to go to the hospital. You go to police headquarters. They'll help you locate him. The Melrose Loan Company robbery. What's the report? The bomb was a phony. They wounded Officer Nelson. We got him to the hospital in one of Division 5's MD vans. Is there a make? Three able six. Do you have a make? Officer Nelson got a look at the one who shot him. He says Marty Bellows. Yeah, right. I don't know why he said Jones. The name on the book was Daryl. All right, keep him on the dialysis. Check the clinic files. He must have had treatment someplace. The boy may be Steve Darrell's son. Darrell has a record a mile long. That shouldn't be hard to find him. No, it shouldn't, except that Marty Bellows was identified as one of the men who just robbed the loan company. Bellows usually works with Steve Darrell. Dan, we have to find him. We need him. They shot an officer. We'll find him. We need him alive to save his son. Our job is to find Darrell, Simon. Alive or dead is up to him. Somebody. Okay, go play in the fire. Come on. A baby goes in there and I get busted. All right, then you tell me, where's Steve Darrell? Well, he ain't here now. Like your numbers bank isn't in there either? Or your betting parlor you've got hidden behind the wall racks with about a dozen track phones? Maybe the cops will have an easier time raiding this place if they get some help. Tough kid. Hard as nails. Well, I guess we better tell him. Okay, come on. One word. And next time he had more than a sample. And never liked his own man anyway.
Dr. Howe's my brother. Your brother's in good hands. It's his brother that worries me right now. All right, where does it hurt? My shoulder and my stomach. What happened? I was mugged. All right, you're gonna have to go back with me for some x-rays. Doctor, I've got things to do. Like look for your father? Jeff, let us help you. We're both looking for the same thing. Is your brother dying too? No, he isn't. We both just want to see that your brother has a chance. You know, when, when we were younger, we used to trade things. I mean, he was only about four years old, but he used to trade me a broken pencil for a hockey puck. We used to sit up all night sometimes just doing that, just because it hurt him too much to sleep. We didn't have any toys to play with. And he, he was scared to be alone. You can tell the juvenile authorities you are mugged. You can tell the doctor you are mugged. But you know and I know you were looking for Steve Darrell. Is this part of my examination, doctor? Dan, I ask you to let me handle this. Out of it. This boy is a minor. And this woman is an authorized member of the juvenile court. And I am fully qualified under the circumstances to question this young man who is refusing to cooperate. This is a medical case, Dan. This boy's brother is suffering from renal failure. That means his kidneys are not functioning. If he doesn't get a transplant, he's gonna die. What we're doing is looking for the proper donor. The proper donor is a vicious felon. I don't care if he's a mass murderer. This boy needs him now. What is this, a contest? You get a crack at him, I get a crack at him? No, Simon. I want him, but I'm not gonna beg him to come in and I'm not making any deals. Officer Nelson died. I just got back from telling his widow. <sighs> Listen, Jeff. Your father planned that robbery. He made a widow out of a 25-year-old girl with three small children, each one younger than your brother. So I must find him, because if I don't, he's going to make another young girl with small children into a widow, and I'm not going to let that happen. Take that one. Mm -hmm. It's a joke, Steve. Forget it. That kid's been sick since I knew him. And his mother was sick since I knew her, I'm telling you. Well, what'd you get married for? Because uh, everybody in the street was getting married, that's why. Listen, you do what you want to do. It's no skin. That story in a paper. They expect me to buy that? Don't I know my own kid? Don't I know they're using him to get to me? So, it's a joke, baby, so forget it. Yeah. Yeah, all right. Anyway, if this next job's half as good as I think it is, I'll send the kids a couple of G's. I mean, that should make somebody feel better, right? Jeff Darrow. So? You know my father. I know a lot of fathers. Is he here? This is his coat. Is it? Yeah. My brother and I saved up a whole year to buy this. Didn't like him much, though. He said it was for a farmer. Yeah, well, he probably don't even know he left it here. I don't see him anymore. Well, in case you do... Look, I just told I you. I said, in case you do, will you tell him his son is dying? Oh, yeah. All that junk in the papers. That junk in the papers is true. Okay. What about your father? He's got a life left, too, you know. It's a trick. 
It's a dirty, dumb cop trick to get their hands on him because one of them got it. Miss, my brother is dying. I don't know nothing. Steve Darrell's probably on the moon. You look for him there. My brother's in central receiving intensive care, room 214. Oh, in case you should see my father. You crazy. You want me to turn a guy in so he can spend the rest of his life in jail. He's been good to me. Don't ask me why. He's a bum. But he's been good to me. Where's your kid? He was, uh, crying about the refrigerator being empty, so I gave him a 20. You owe me. sorry you were. The cop followed me and you let him. Look, just go away, will you? There's nothing to talk about. You're right. There's no time left to talk. Look, I told you, stay out of it. You two are gonna wind up getting my father killed, and then my brother's gonna be finished. Just let me find him. Let me talk to him, all right? Jeff, there's a girl in that building you just came out of. She's your father's friend. Her? She doesn't know where he is. How do you know? Because she told me. She told you? I'm sorry, Simon. We tried your way. We've got to move in. No, no, he's not up there. Look, he's, he's not that rotten. He knows Lenny's dying. Nobody could be that rotten. Miller, change. Dan, no. Five minutes. Five minutes. You can surround the place, lock it up, but let them talk for five minutes. She gave it a 20. Lenny's dying. Uh, don't give me that again. Yeah, he's still dying. I don't buy that. They want me and they don't know how to get me. They got you. I'm right outside. There's cops all over the place. You told them? You want to get me killed, don't you? No! Go ahead and shoot. You're killing one kid, you might as well kill me too.
have to happen. He was coming out to, to help, Doctor. I, I swear it. He said he was going to do it for Lenny. He really wanted to help. It's all right, Jeff. You'll still be able to. These are pretty dull for you, huh? No, the lieutenant bought them for me. They're detective stories. Oh. Jeff's right. They are pretty dull. They're about heroes. Guys like your brother. Your two friends committed the robbery. You weren't there, but you know the law. He wants to come visit you sometime? Yeah, if you want to visit, visit. You know, you're really something else. I mean, you're really no good. And, and just this one thing that you did for Lenny, it's not going to erase anything at all. But thanks. Hey, Doc. Another one, the one who just left, Jeff. He's tough, ain't he? I mean... He's going to be all right. He'll make out. 